three, two, one. Sorry. Why do you look the most comfortable out of all of us? Uh, there's another fucking chair right over there. <laughs> but I can't move because I can't bump. How can you, I, I feel great. We spoke about this. Yeah. Get comfortable. Well, you know, you can be my Peter. You can be the rock of the church. You can be my You know, the, Peter was the rock, Jesus said, the one that the church should be built on. And it's because, not because of anything about his strength. He uh, he couldn't even kill a guy when he came at him. Ah, I just cut his ear off, you know. And then Jesus heals the ear. And he's like, what am I even here for? But the thing is, Jesus would tell stories and parables that way. You know, the people that were smart enough he wouldn't mind having around they could understand the the underlying thing in that parable but peter always needs to say i don't understand uh rabbi and uh then then jesus would look at him and say oh peter you know like you look at a, a, I'm you not, know, did somebody, you say that they built a church on some guy named peter this right now we, we were are, i think oh we're just moving. Where's the on the air? No, that's sign? actually funny. Come too. on, that's great. <laughs> Come on, that'll be a clip in the future. You're on the air. It'll just be randomly. Go. Why aren't you recording this right now? I was about to say I'm not familiar with that. Um, I, okay, restart or wait. I, I wait. I'm I'm back to the same question. I it, I'm, I'm not waiting, familiar with that story. I've been waiting to ask because the first thing I heard you say is they built a church on some guy named Peter and then talked about some guy cutting his ear off and I thought that was we built this city no. on a guy named Peter. <laughs> You know what? I just said how, you know, I talked about some, some song, We Didn't Start the Fire. To, it was on radio we, to, to Victoria today. We didn't murder and, Peter, but the thing is, I told her. We built the church. On the, wait, sorry, go ahead. This is, yeah, sorry. But I told her, I said, uh, one of my least favorite songs ever. I said, but the number one least favorite song, the very just most despicable song to me is um we built the city on rock and roll and it, it just bothered me when it was on the air in the late 80s and she agrees it's just a stupid song and i don't even like people putting it into one of my stories well you know they don't they don't, hey. they don't, they don't, ah. really, they don't ah. even really play it on I'm like i don't know i don't listen to like classic rock radio a whole lot i mean is that still on regular airplay i don't think it is is it yeah they've used it in a commercial somewhere and some it just made, there are I things hear, you i mean the song fucking sucks i hear it here i hear it agree, uh, right? oh yeah i remember hearing that as a kid and i'm thinking built this city on rock I, I think the last time i heard that driver was, at the time i think the last time i heard that song it was in family guy See, they won't let it die. I I heard it you when it came out. I, I, about to let them die I, I feel like in the show, in the episode, they were satirically playing it too. Like, so I well, that's the difference. I grew up hearing that on the radio when it came out, and that sucks. Yeah, here's the thing. <laughs> Sounds like it. Here's the thing. This is the kicker right here. It did, and I had to hear it all the time. But that's Whoa, not the kicker. That's that's the preview to the kicker. The kicker is that I saw them starship in a bar in san jose when i first got out there and uh seeing them in a bar i was just reminded how even when i saw winger in the state theater and how i saw night ranger at uh, uh one of those places down there in person that close they you realize they had to have been good to make it as far as they did and they are good and they're a bit chunkier when you yeah, see some them bar they're, they're, in san like, jose well i've always thought yeah probably, yeah that doesn't mean they're still it was before everybody right was making any money coming back they're probably good musicians i mean definitely no, i mean they it, must have you know there is obviously, some of their songs i like too they obviously maybe are not. talented maybe but, i think i'm confusing that. you think they well, probably, Jefferson, Jefferson Starship well, is Starship. Yeah, and then there uh, was Starship and Jefferson Airplane. Yes, and airplane yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And then is it the kind of the same thing as like Crosby, Stills and Nash, but like nah. completely different band? But no, I mean they swapping just, out members. Uh, David Crosby swapped out a liver. Yeah. Okay. And then picked out a kid. <laughs> Fair enough. For a couple lesbians. Couple livers. Talk about immaculate conception. A couple livers. Um. Just keeps getting them. 
thing is, what you have to admit, it they sounded better in person, and, and it wasn't just that they sounded better. It was like you enjoyed them more, the the presence, the reality of it, and that makes it better. And Not sometimes you make the mistake of buying a damn CD afterwards. Not a lot of bands I uh, have been to actually sound better in person. Um, like you said, it's more the presence. It's more the experience. The stage. My first concert uh, was Meatloaf at the DTE Energy Outlet. That was... Uh, it was actually sick. Two oh, hours, three <laughs> someone, someone died that night, too, after the concert. Suicide? After we, well, I mean, maybe. I guess he got ran over by... Uh, oh, the dicky ate in the parking so, lot. Someone got, <laughs> someone got ran over. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> I'd do anything <laughs> for love. Oh, well, I might. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Nobody was looking. No, usually I wouldn't do this. And so here's the thing. Um, and uh, oh, well, what I realized, and, and it, it goes to ACDC when I saw them at Castle Farms. I heard them on the radio. They were, I liked them fine. But when I saw them live and you saw uh, Angus up on the speaker jumping down, playing one-handed in the air from these choo, choo heights and just, ah, and it's like, it, there is something about the realness of it that makes it all the better, and I liked... I've, I've always the, liked, like, the, the sound, thing. like, when you see something live. It's different, I mean... Because you listen to it in your car, and you don't get, like, that, like, the bass drum isn't, like, shaking your chest type thing. But when it's live, the sound's good. Like, I've always I've always appreciated that because, like, everything's so, it's loud. And um, yeah, it's more than loud. It's, uh, like you said, shaking your chest. It's a feeling. Yeah, uh, you can feel, like, the bass drum, like, yeah, it just hits you like a wall. I miss it. And sometimes you just become your eyeballs sitting there on the lawn watching fucking Black Sabbath and they're doing electric Frankenstein or funeral or whatever it is and the guy next to you just asks you, you, you want to hit this? And you're in the, <laughs> and it's not legal. And uh, okay, so you smoke Hopefully, and yeah. uh, you're both sitting there and it's just like you're nothing but floating eyes. It's That's the reality of it. Tool, I've got this scar right here. The first time I got that scar at was a at a tool concert. concert. Oh, I was God. going through the... I'm the guy that he said, Hey, get that fucking guy out of there. But he didn't. And uh, <laughs> going through the crowd when they're all doing their little... Walking around in circles, it's not really a mosh. It's, it's yeah, a, it's a tool concert. It's a choreography. <laughs> no, anything. Any kind of mosh pit now where people are walking around with their arms like... Hacksaw Jim Dugan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. it's like when we played shows, they're like, everyone's a back off. I gotta do some windmills. Like that. Kind of like. No, no. Nobody, I mean, you started like those. like a circle pit, but everybody's just kind of like hiking around in like a yeah. circle. Like not a like. Skank, and I go backwards. Or whatever no, they call these, that. Like, not like wall of death stuff where like. I mean, I've been to shows like even like Township Hall shows where it's like. It can get frightening. Well, I'd like, go against it. And you I didn't. was going through it with head down, going rah, cruising through this damn thing, and I, somebody I caught an elbow, and I had blood coming all out of there, and, and I didn't know what I looked like until I left, and I stopped to take a pee, and I would just look like well, I've been in a fucking mass murder. Because you don't, it doesn't matter. You're in the moment. You're just. But but the oh, that's the thing I was getting at was in the tour concert. I I felt just something whoa. That something about it, it was it was what I would call spiritual, and I was sober, and uh, I, it was there was some kind of experience. No, it, it is yeah. it is interesting being a crowd like that where everybody starts moving and things like that. I've always, you know, thought that was a. Uh, Geez, we should get some people energized. to go up to the capital. It's energy. <laughs> Lowercase, please. We don't say capital around here. <laughs> Lowercase. I, I, use, I said with an A, <laughs> money, capital. You know, there's a difference between the We should the get some money. That's what capital oh, is I with an it. O. Yeah, but you, circle pit. Um, <laughs> was he, somebody in another country just donated me money. I, I, they said something they mistook me for. Um, 
Should I oh, pop? Man. <laughs> I forgot what we were even talking about. I've, uh, uh, no, like, I've always, I've oh, always the, liked concerts and stuff like that. Like the idea of the how music. Much something really is I, in person. I had I a miss. good. Hey, there's another thing. Good to see you guys. Didn't we just say nice yeah, to yeah, see somebody? See you. Yeah, yeah, we're. I guess we're. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, we're in person. You, I guess we. Uh, we're yeah. not doing this through um, conference call tonight. Uh, Should we address it? We're all in the same room. Should we address it? Go ahead. Oh yeah. Oh fuck! Did I kick the cord? Break time. We can listen to that. <laughs> Arch Archibald Elderquist. Right. You can call me Archie if you feel uh feel the pull because I am J Archer Elderquist. You don't think I can just walk around my whole life telling everybody, "Hey, how you doing? I'm Judas. I'll have your daughter for the night." I have to ask, what J Elder? You never fully explained to us what that means. Well, it's my name. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Where it came from? This yeah. is a long story. This yeah, because as, uh, as far as I know, your name is, but uh, fucking yeah, that one. And then, oh boy, this is really something because uh, I mean, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I always figured there was no reason to talk about it on the show because one day somebody would be interviewing me, and I would then go ahead and tell the story of it, you know. And look, here we are. <clears throat> yeah, that was. We could do better, but more on that That's later. That's just fine. We got just Mo got here because in, in in a, a Polish family, everybody will have an Aunt Martha, and Aunt <laughs> Martha is just like the one that torments and terrorizes everybody around with the things that they have to say without ever thinking that it's good, and then say, <laughs> "What a horrible and, way to live!" Yeah. And so, <laughs> not only did we have one Aunt Martha that we know of, the, the matriarch of Marthas, every family that split from their brothers and sisters would have have kids and a, and a generation of aunt marthas in every little pod so you're talking about like some like there's got to be a female asshole yeah mm. and the, why the, i mean just that's the way it is because mm. that they well you know aunt martha last night she was she was screwing some guy in Detroit I guess and you know she was supposedly a housekeeper but she was a housekeeper for many people but she was supposedly an old spinster that didn't change her last letter from an I to a, an A to an I you know like yeah, yeah. skis and skies she's not married she was you know never said she was a virgin but she just was you know, assume she's an old maid and she was able to be a bitch to everybody, but I'm pretty sure she was banging all these guys she was cleaning house for. Down here cleaning house. And then at a wedding, the one time she said that my dad and this friend of his, and she said something, well, I never. And my dad's friend, who I've said his name on one of my shows already uh, several times, he says, and you never will with a face like that. And I said, oh, my God. You know, it's not a funny joke until you see it used on Aunt Martha. That <laughs> shut her up. Turned her around. Yeah, I never, I never grew up in a family like that that was, you know, so tight and close-knit like that. So it's, it's kind of foreign to me. Like, you know, you've got tons of relatives around and things like that. They're always constantly, like, you know. There will be all kinds of stories. Well, and they you know, they just... Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I've known people that have had that situation where everybody kind of knows everything about you, even though they're like your second cousin twice removed or something. And uh, it's always just been real foreign to me. But I mean, it makes sense because you, uh, you yeah. know, you live in the area. Farm together and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so if you're close-knit like that, it, I, I get it, but I just, I've never understood why people were so like, like kind of took advantage of it and like turned it into a way where it was like a uh, punitive thing like where they're like call you out and be mean to you about it oh yeah they're they're always talking about somebody but uh and the, there's a thing uh you say second and third cousins where well, everybody yeah. knows the stories the interesting thing is by the time it gets to those second and third cousins or the ones out in the damn woods in Joburg, uh in the cabin the stories are all land. wrong they, they asked my sister, they said, I heard you, that Shout out. Archie went to... Shout out to Joe Bird. <laughs> the Koresh cult. And I was like, what? Did you? No, I went to Fish Alaska. Oh. 
But they assumed you went to go like join David Koresh and his yeah. musical musical. Uh, yeah, but they things. were already dead, so I don't know if they thought that I was going to take over or what. I went through Waco <laughs> when they were burning them. Oh, it was after Waco? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that doesn't make any sense, then. David Koresh. Maybe you're gonna... the kind of stories they come up with. Well, were they? Did they know he was that already occurred, or were they just like... I mean, they just tell them enough stories. I, I had no idea how much I, I was talked about. I've seen that guy playing the guitar on like YouTube. He wasn't too bad. You know, Manson had that rose. <laughs> Ansel yeah. Rose did a song. Yeah, yeah. Like, he likes I, Manson. I, I get way into that. My but. sister herself, <laughs> she called me the one day. And it was about the time I was living next door to you, whatever your name is. Who are you? Nah, I don't know. Okay. Nobody. Tabu Jidao. Bu Jidao, that's your name, that's Chinese. I just said he doesn't know, but Bu Ta Bu Jidao. Bu Jidao means don't know. So you could just be Buja. He don't know who don't. is named. Just don't? Or is that no? Just don't know. Jidao means no. Ming Bai means understand, and you got, there is a difference. That's why I had to learn those words, because sometimes I just don't understand. No, this is fantastic. This is the, se the, this is the segment of the show where... Uh, Archie teaches us Chinese. Well, we already did enough of it. it. It gets long and drawn out. I went for two minutes on one one thing in the video, and it just you sit there and go, "What the fuck?" That's you true. lose track of what was even going on. But here's the point: I taught Chinese, and my sister called me from Montana, and she says, "Yeah, um, uh, her husband and the kids." Uh, they, she says, I know I can't ask you this, that you you can't say, but we talked and we think you're with the CIA, and I was like, well, that's interesting. But why? Well, you because never tell us I if you come were. and I go and I come back. I'm learning languages, and you know that there's, I um, was pretty. Chinese came very naturally to me, so I came back, and I wouldn't say I'm fluent, but you know what? When I see wow. these fuckers that say they're fluent and they can't even buy a pack of cigarettes, you know, and that's it. I think we might have talked about this already. I was out in Inner Mongolia on my so, own on a train and, and buying beer and hanging out with old men and getting foot massages. What kind of smokes do they sell in China? Yeah. Shitty. You can spend a whole lot of money, 100 yuan. Just like on the ones here. Well, no, like when you go to, like, Canada or something, they've got like their their brands that you know, like Player oh, or actually, Benson um, Edges. Like there's popular brands there. Pictures are like Meili Shweshan. I have a cigarette packet from the Meili Shweshan, which was a very ex expensive cigarette, and it's got the picture of the mountain on it. And that's the mountain I, I tracked around that was supposed to be a sacred pilgrimage. But it, that's uh, that is one brand that's well known. They sell them twenty five packs or twenty. Okay. Like, yeah, like players, you buy them in Canada and they're all 25 pack, like slim, like, yeah, like this wide. And they got like some baby dying on the front from like cancer or something to try to yeah, change. That's the one that I can, yeah. That's the one that I've uh, seen before. So. Does it have a picture of a cancer that's taking a child form and strangling the baby that's getting it's killed something, by cancer? It's something like that. You know, I don't, I haven't been back to Canada in at least probably a decade. They wouldn't um, let me the last time I tried. I, you know, that's the reason why I haven't tried because I'm afraid of getting turned away they at the border. It's five years. I went up through the Sioux. I was going, but that's, yeah. They, that's the first place where I realized they do know ever, know everything about me because they took me into the office and I sat there for at least a half hour while this woman was at a computer. Yeah, yeah. Print things just kept printing he, out and she's like, have you? And I'm like, no, not, not that I didn't. She's like, well, it says here. And I'm like, holy crap. There was a whole line of stuff. I said, these So you went to the, the immigration know. office. You didn't go yeah. into the pole barn where they like tear, tear shake you no, down. No, they didn't. Uh, wait, where they don't what? Shake you down. I mean, where they like tear your vehicle apart. No, they didn't do that at all. Just walk in. You, you got to go to the office and show and your ID. Yeah. They yeah. still tear your vehicle apart in Canada. Oh, yeah. I mean, do they still? Or like, are they polite? They're like, all right. I don't know. I've never had that happen uh, going into Canada. I've never been to Canada. I've I've, um, I've been going into That's Canada it. where they've immigrated, and you walk into the office, and I've looked out the window, and there's some guy walking around your car with, like, a dog and stuff. It's like, whatever. Um, but on the way back into the U.S., oh, yeah. Like, 
they were friendlier to me at the Canadian border in the immigration office or whatever, the border patrol, uh, telling me no, that I can't come in than they were to me coming back into the U.S. And it's interesting because I said when they turned me away and I got to go back across the bridge, I said... That's what I was wondering. Did you, they just I, make you do a U-turn? Yeah, they, they have a... Oh, is a there place. a loop? Yeah. I never noticed because I was always like... Well, I said, are they going to let me back in to the U.S.? That's what was worrying me, too, because yeah. I'm like, they might not let me, but they, they might be waiting for me. And, I'm like, and she said, oh, no, they have to let you back in. You're a citizen. She made it sound like I was a good person. Oh, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I mean, and they gave <laughs> that you, they me have to let you back <laughs> in. Excuse oh, me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That was hard. <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, they gave me some. They acted aggressive towards me, in, in on the U.S. side of it. Whether or not you, you, we weren't even talking about that time I got taken off the train at the Ukrainian border at gun, in the middle of the night, full moon, trying to get through Ukraine, to get to a. Uh, Romania to, to get the Tepesh's castle, you know, Dracula's castle, full moon. And I was on a three day drunk coming out of Warsaw, so I was not feeling in any way to go out. And I was the only one that really spoke Polish. I, and uh, so these guys went and they asked the woman in the state uniform, you know, state run, it was still very much beyond the wall. When we landed in in the Warsaw Airport there, it was spring break and there were snowflakes just as big as anything, you know, boulder sized marbles, you know, coming down and guys with <laughs> guns on every street corner in the military. It looks like uh, Soviet Russia. And these guys looked at me and they said, what did you get us into? I said, I didn't ask you to come. What year was this? 1998, spring break oh, wow. 98. But so, yeah, then they went in and with that old state run system still going on, they bought tickets, train tickets, cash we used. They would have never found us. Um, and they asked the woman if we needed a visa and she said no. And as it turns out, if you're a Polish citizen, you don't need a visa. But if you're from the U.S., you do to get through Ukraine. And uh, yeah, they let us out of the Ukraine. At the, at the, they stamped our thing to get out out of Poland. But when we were stopping at the Ukraine border, they came on and uh, checked passports. And they started screaming and had rifles drawn on us. and. And they're screaming, and these guys that I was with, they were looking at me, and I said, I think they want us to get off the train. And so they took us off, and there was a little cinder block border patrol place. They took us around back and put us in the back of a military vehicle, like a, an army a, a deuce and a half type of you know, cargo trailer with a can canvas tarp, and a guy in there with a machine gun, uh, with a rifle on us, you know, military. And uh, I, I've, just, I've never been anywhere like disappear. that. I just, well, it reminds me of like, yeah, like Locked Up Abroad. I don't know if you've ever seen that show. I haven't. I have been, though. Well, that's the thing. Like, so these people, like, usually it has to do with, like, let us out. South American, like, people talking into, like, some U.S. or, you know, U.K. citizen into, like, running drugs or something for them. Um, Midnight Express, Turkey. Well, and the, they get end stuff, up. You know. They get end up getting imprisoned or something in like a you know a Mexican or a Colombian prison, and like you know there's people like it just it looks horrible. Papillon. Well, yeah, like there's people like there's they've got grenades inside the prison, like you know it's just it's like a war zone. I mean like, that was like what the damn train station was in the Ukraine. It was because they made us go in. They wouldn't let us out. Well, that's a scary thing. Like, once you get into that situation, like... We're thinking about running through a minefield to get back to Poland. I gotta get out of here. I, you know, it's, it, some of those shows are... They're, I mean, they're frightening. Like, it, you're just stuck in this prison. And um, maybe never even been actually convicted of anything except for um, 
suspected. Like you get caught at an airport with Can't. a duffel bag or something, and now next thing you know, you're, uh, you know, kind of living like, life in hell, like they do in the U.S. with home. people like Sean Connery in The Rock. <laughs> I don't know about Sean Connery. I know, I know. The who movie he is. The Rock. Where they had his character in, in the hole under the prison, you know, and they just, he didn't exist. That's why Nick Cage, he needed to use him to, oh, okay. for the uh, bomb on Alcatraz. I've been to Alcatraz. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's supposed to have been a couple people that, uh, like two, right, that uh, escaped from Alcatraz. Oh, yeah, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, Clint Eastwood escaped from Alcatraz. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my dad was going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I never been in a prison in my life, and I don't want to go now. You know, we got to do something. I aim to visit me. I ain't going back. <laughs> you better take me alive, copper. Hey. Good thought to stop for a second. <laughs> 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 